There was nobody prepared for the attack that came that early morning on February the 16th, 1944. The most effective United States carrier-borne Air Armada ever sent into action prepares a surprise blow against the powerful Japanese naval base at Truk. Bombers, torpedo planes, and Hellcat fighters stand ready for the takeoff. With an overwhelming force of planes roars into the sky, the finest planes and the greatest flyers in the world. Every one of the ships in the lagoon has an intriguing story with details of where it worked, what it was built for, and how it was employed, and of course what destroyed it here in the, in the uh, ensuing attack. The Cuban Operation Hailstone was the culmination of the American forces into becoming one of the largest attacks or assembly of warships up until that time in any war in the world. The attack was very uh, one-sided. The American forces had about 300 and some odd aircraft in the sky. Uh, they swept in over an unsuspecting or at least unprepared lagoon. Most of the aircraft on six airfields sitting at, uh, at rest in anything but a ready position for uh, defense. They, um, managed to react after a short time and get about 20 or 30 aircraft up. They came down like flies as the American planes swept in on them. They bombed and strafed and destroyed most of the aircraft on the ground that morning. Wherever they looked, there was a Japanese airplane with smoke behind the middle of the ocean. They figured that there was a Japanese plane hitting the water uh, at least every 40 seconds for the most of the afternoon. And by the end of the day, that first day, there was no more Japanese aircraft to defend the location, leaving the ships totally vulnerable to the bombing and the strafing that followed for the next two days. The defending Japs are stunned by the suddenness of the first blow delivered with crushing force on the heart of the great fortress in mid-Pacific. Like Hitler's Europe, Tojo just forgot to put a ceiling over troops and jubilant Navy cameramen take pictures to prove it. Explorer diver Jacques Cousteau sent his troops in here to do a mission. And they found incredible life on the ships. They found all kinds of artifacts, telegraphs, uh, clocks, barometers. They unscrewed and took an awful lot of, as encouraged by the U.S. to do so, so that they could be exhibited somewhere in the world and shown what was here and what had been destroyed. But what was left, of course, beyond that was the huge ordinances, the bombs, the torpedoes, the machine gun shells, all of the uh, explosives. They're all unstable and it could go up at any time that you move it or, or, or shift it. The best thing of all is just to look at them take pictures of them and leave them alone, not to play with them. Of the ships that are sunk and on the bottom, here in truck, of which the remains of close to 70, uh, they, they consist primarily of cargo vessels, but there is very few actual warships here in the lagoon other than two destroyers and the tugboats of the, uh, of the Japanese Navy. The yeah, Ikokomaru had been a big armed merchant uh, cruiser. The forward two holes were full of, uh, of ordnance and ammunition, right up to the hatch combings. She was carrying more explosives than probably the total mag powder magazines of about six battleships. When two torpedo aircraft from the uh, USS Enterprise had picked her out as a prize to attack, so they peeled off the, the squadron leader. The Icoco gunners were extremely uh, accurate and they completely shot up his aircraft but it kept on coming and it went straight into the forward holes that were full of ordnance and set off an explosion that either matched or even eclipsed the force of an atomic bomb. The Icoco had disappeared two minutes after this explosion, the after half of the ship being almost totally intact and looking like it had been sliced right down through the middle. The troops that were on board were consumed in the explosion because when we first dove on that ship, there was a debris field of bones in those, two four, in those two top holes that was up to four feet deep with the human remains scattered completely throughout the, uh, 
the top two lounges. We placed the plaque on the ship and uh, various items were placed on the upper part of the ship to commemorate the event and to pay tribute.